Peningkatan pemasukan rata-rata pekerja AS di tengah pemulihan ekonomi tak mengejar tingginya laju inflasi. What's happened is in the last six months to a year, inflation has taken up rapidly increased, and we haven't seen wage growth follow that. And so what that means from a perspective of thinking about real incomes and real buying power is that people have seen their real buying power decrease by three to five percent on average over the last six months. Um, and depending on what happened to your actual pay raises, some people could have seen a real decrease in as much as eight to nine percent given the levels of inflation that we've seen. Kebijakan selanjutnya dari pembuat kebijakan fiskal juga bakal menyusahkan konsumen secara jangka pendek. That's going to be fundamentally bringing the money out of the economy. And that can come through higher rates of interest. Um, that could come through tax increases, reductions in spending. None of these things are things that people really enjoy doing. But we also don't enjoy inflation. And that's, you know, the problem. Why do we try to keep inflation low is because the the big Big ways to solve it are very painful for for individual consumers. Analis umumnya memperkirakan inflasi belum bakal turun dalam waktu dekat dan konsumen harus berhemat. So food and energy are two categories where you can really make some adjustments that I think are worthwhile. If you're thinking about when you go to the grocery store, how much are you really meal planning? How strategic are you being about what types of food you're buying? We tend to be pretty meat heavy in our diet in the United States. So thinking about maybe cutting back a little bit on that category because meat is one of the areas where we're seeing really severe increases in costs. Tapi menimbun makanan atau energi justru kontraproduktif. Questions around whether to buy in bulk are I think really salient here. I do think it makes sense to think about making some of your purchases from larger retailers that offer larger supplies or, or larger quantity purchases because oftentimes you do get significant discounts in that context. I do not necessarily think it's a great idea for consumers to be running out trying to buy as much of certain commodities as possible for fear of the costs going up because that type of um, impulse buying or excessive purchasing actually tends to just exacerbate the problem where we're increasingly cutting into the available supply and driving up the costs through that process. Harga energi dan harga makanan memang memiliki tingkat volatilitas tinggi. Indikator utama laju inflasi di Amerika Serikat, yaitu indeks harga konsumen, meningkat 8,5 persen selama setahun. Tapi bila tidak menyertakan harga makanan dan juga harga energi, maka angkanya yang disebut sebagai indeks harga konsumen inti atau core CPI mencapai 6,5 persen. Dari Washington DC, saya Nova Purwadi dan tim VOA.